I want to dedicate this morning to Sir Colin Fassi. This is the third time I am supposed to share an international forum with her. And this is the third time that international diplomats won't let her go through Europe to get out of Ethiopia. So, cheers to Sir Colin. <laughs> Said Kalem Fasil is an Ethiopian journalist and former co-publisher of different newspapers. She has suffered a long time imprisonment following her writings and critics against the government in her home country. Unfortunately, as Lydia mentioned, she was not given the possibilities to be with us as planned for today. But she has sent us her speech, which will be read by the Chilean Norwegian actor Alexandra Koren from Actors for Human Rights. Serkalem Fasil was a young editor and owner of two weekly newspapers in Ethiopia, namely Minilik and Sateno. After the 2005 general election, almost all independent journalists, including her, were imprisoned and the newspapers shut down. Her husband, Eskinder Nega, a columnist and a writer, was also imprisoned with her for about two years. Their only crime was to have published newspapers. This is her statement. My name is Serkalem Fasil. I am a journalist from Ethiopia. With a population of almost 80 million people, Ethiopia is the third most populous nation in Africa, behind Nigeria and Egypt. However, in less than a decade, Ethiopia will overtake Egypt as the second most populous nation on the continent and one of the 10 most populous nations in the world. This fact makes Ethiopia one of the more important nations in the world. Many underdeveloped and poor countries in Africa have become democratic countries over the past 20 years, but Ethiopia has yet to get there. Because we have seen 23 African countries transform into democracies, we know that Ethiopia too can get there. The success of those African countries has inspired many Ethiopians, including me. In 2005, I was in prison, along with many other journalists, opposition leaders, and civil society members, following the first democratic election in the country's history. What made my case unique was that I was pregnant at the time. And despite numerous appeals to set me free, the Ethiopian Prime Minister, Mele Sanawi, refused, and I gave birth to my first child in prison. I will now tell you what happened to me in prison in three parts. I will start by describing how I was treated in prison during my pregnancy and prenatal care. The prison authorities made sure I was uncomfortable. For example, in penitentiary of the female detainees who were charged with me, Two were given separate beds in deference to their status as political prisoners, while I and a few others were assigned aging double beds. Incredibly, I was expected to bed on the upper deck, which is extremely dangerous for a pregnant woman. Fortunately, the lady assigned to the lower bed was a friend of mine who voluntarily took the upper deck. Sleeping on the lower deck was very difficult for me, because every time my friend on the upper deck moved, my bed would move too. As my pregnancy progressed, I spent many sleepless and tearful nights. That this sleeping arrangement was particularly painful to me was common knowledge, but prison officials were too sadistically contented with my pain to change my sleeping arrangement. The sleeping arrangement was the longest nightmare of my prison experience. 
which now symbolizes moral bankruptcy and of tyrants to me. It was tantamount to a long and deliberate torture. Nonetheless, I am not bitter against those who did that to me. And I will pray for their forgiveness. For as it says in the Bible, they did not know what they were doing. As to prenatal care, it did not exist. It was five months before I was allowed to see a specialist, and then only because of the intervention of the Prime Minister's office at the behest of Professor Donald Levine, an American professor who was allowed to see my husband. The prison was full of very big rats that do not fear humans, and sometimes they would come on your bed. The rats terrified us every day. The prison was also very dirty and full of infectious diseases. Many people say it is the worst prison in the whole of Africa. Because of the unusually difficult pregnancy, my blood pressure shot to a soaring level, necessitating my admission to hospital during the late stages of my pregnancy. Four heavily armed guards were assigned to watch over me at the hospital. <laughs> At most times, no one was allowed to visit me, in effect turning my stay at the hospital into a solitary confinement. This was an unexpected and unhappy turn of events for me, because this was when I needed moral support at most. However, the hospital staff were freely sympathetic and did all they could to make my stay comfortable. I will never forget their kindness. And of course, after being admitted to the hospital, I had a comfortable bed to spend the night in. But the loneliness was punishing, and many times I longed for that uncomfortable prison bed. My baby was distinctly underweight at birth. The doctor immediately determined that he should be placed in an incubator. Since there were no incubators at the police hospital, the child was taken to another hospital. But hospital regulation required that at least one parent sign an authorization before the placement of the child in an incubator. Despite the pleas of the medical personnel, the prison officials refused to allow one of us, his father was also in prison at the same time, for the same charges as me, to sign the necessary document without express authorization from higher authorities. The higher authorities turned down the request, preventing either parents from signing. And thus the baby was not placed in an incubator that was deemed life-saving for him. In other words, the state sanctioned the child to death, perhaps hoping that the issue would also die with him. The child, however, survived, defying all the medical odds stacked against him. Almost three years later, these days, though still underweight, my baby has superb health by the grace of the good Lord. So the support expressed on my behalf not only helped me, but also my unborn child. I am eternally grateful. Ethiopia shall be free from tyranny. Thank you and God bless you. How can I now compose verses? How can I now write? After the shackles and the night and the suffering and the tears, how can I write poetry?